Hi, my name is Rachel Pelder, and I am reading page 102 and 103 from Fahrenheit 451. Okay. What is there about fire that's so lovely? No matter what age we are, what draws us to it? BD blew out the, bl the flame and lit it again. It's perpetual motion, the thing man wanted to invent but never did, or almost perpetual motion. If you let it go on, it'd burn our lifetimes out. What is fire? It's a mystery. Scientists give us gobble gobbledygook about friction and molecules, but they don't really know. Its real beauty is that it destroys responsibility and consequences. A problem gets too burdensome, and then into the furnace with it. Now, Montag, you're a burden, and fire will lift you off my shoulders, clean, quick, sure. Nothing to rot later. Antibiotic, aesthetic, practical. Montag's still looking in now at, his queer, at this queer house, made strange by the hour of the night, by murmuring neighbor voices, by littered glass, and there on the floor, their covers torn off and spilled out like swan feathers, the incredible books that looked so silly and really not worth bothering with, for these were nothing but black type and yellowed paper and raveled binding. Mildred, of course, she must have watched him hide the books in the garden and brought them back in. Mildred, Mildred. I want you to do this job all by your lonesome, Montag. Not with kerosene and a match, but piecework, with a flamethrower. Your house, your cleanup. Montag, can't you run? Get away. No, cried Montag helplessly. The hound, because of the hound. Faber heard Beatty, thinking it was meant for him, heard. Yes, the hound's somewhere around the neighborhood, so don't try anything. Ready? Ready, Montag snapped the safety catch off of the flamethrower. Fire. A great nuzzling out of the fire leapt out to lap at the books and knocked them against the wall. He stepped into the bedroom and fired twice, and the twin beds went up in a great simmering whisper, with more heat and passion and light than he would have supposed them to contain. He burnt the bedroom walls and the cosmetics chest because he wanted to change everything, the chairs, the tables, and in the dining room, the silverware and plastic dishes, everything that showed that he had lived here in this empty house with a strange woman who would forget him tomorrow, who had gone and quite forgotten him already, listening to her seashell radio pour in on her and in on her as she rode across town alone. And as before, it was good to burn. He felt himself gush out in the fire, snatch, rend, rip in half with the flame, and put away the senseless problem. If there was no solution, well, then now there was no problem either. Fire was the best for everything. The books, Montag. The books leapt and danced like roasted birds, their wings ablaze with red and yellow feathers. And then he came to the parlor, where the great idiot monsters lay asleep with their white thoughts and their snowy dreams. And he shot a bolt at each of the three blank walls, and the vacuum hissed out at him. The emptiness made an even emptier whistle, a senseless scream. He tried to think about the vacuum upon which the nothingness had performed, but he could not. He held his breath so the vacuum could not get into his lungs. He cut off its terrible emptiness, drew back, and gave the entire room a gift of one huge bright yellow flower of burning. The fireproof plastic sheath on everything was cut wide, and the house began to shudder with flame. When you're quite finished, said Beattie behind him, you're under arrest.